La ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just checking to make sure everything's working. Everything's working. We don't want to have another terrible, terrible misstep like we did yesterday. Today is January 28th, 2014, and this is the King Kill Show, episode 158. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday, where we learn to be better artists. And today we are going to be doing a tutorial on <gasps> painting dark skin and braids, a.k.a. how to paint brothers and sisters. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane because we got a bunch of awesome new submissions from viewers like you, from the beautiful people sitting at home, learning to be better artists, and submitting their awesome stuff to the Facebook. And for those of you who don't know the way that things work now, if you submit your characters or anything that you draw here, I select three to four random drawings, or drawings that I like, and I draw them in my own style on Wednesdays. So, if you haven't come out of your shell yet and posted on the Facebook, please do so. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is down below. Join the Facebook, submit your pictures, and I'll draw them. Alrighty, and this, this right here, this should have never seen the light of day. Never should have seen the light of day. I'm really sorry you guys had to see that. Anyway, yeah, let's just finish this up. Got a couple other ones here. I was making a joke. I'm like, one day I'm literally going to have to just scroll at like light speed and it's still going to take me like 10 minutes to get through all the submissions through the week. All right. Last thing before we jump into it, I'm doing a pay what you want through Patreon for these prints here. Basically, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Emma, or you can click that little button on YouTube and you can basically go to this site and pledge as little as a dollar. And when that number gets to $300, I'm sending these out to you for free, basically. Well, yeah. Pay a dollar at least, and then you know I'll cover the shipping and all that stuff. All right, all that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. Tutorial. All right. Oh crap! And I totally forgot. I am such an idiot because I did a time lapse of everything that I did to get to this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up inconspicuously while I'm distracting you, so you don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. Wait. There we go. All right. So, a lot of you may be wondering how I got to the current state, and I'm going to show you via time lapse. So let's go ahead and get into that. So, um, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is a couple things that I've, I mean, just kind of learned, and a couple things that I was afraid of when I was going into painting dark skin because I haven't, I haven't actually painted a lot of characters with dark skin or black characters. So this was actually really, really fun to do. And um, it actually ended up being a lot more simple than I thought it was going to be. And a lot of the tips that I give you guys for painting skin normally, you know, just all the tutorials that I've gone into with blending skin tones and all that stuff, all those things are going to apply to today's tutorial. Just a little bit of slight tweaks in it, slight tweaks, and, and it's actually going to be really, really fun. But for those of you who are curious about the style that I work in and how I like to paint people, is I actually begin by just using the chalk brush, which you can also get in the links down below. You can download all my brushes for free. And um, yeah, I actually just paint sort of like a grayscale picture of the person. A little bit of like values in here you can see in the cheeks. And just getting a general overall feel and construction of the face. Then what I end up doing is I drop the colors behind it. And this can be seen in the tutorial that I call adding color to a grayscale portrait. If you search that, uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail of the process that you're going to see today. But um, also what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how I like to make braids, like, like these little details in here. It's actually very, very easy, super effective, just like Charizard casting flame pillar on Venusaur. Uh, does he have flame pillar? No, no, no. What was I thinking? Fire spin, fire spin on Venusaur. Yes, super effective. And yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Lots of good things. But in the meantime, let's continue with our time lapse. We've got about... This thing is going to run for about four minutes. And I don't know if that is actually something that I'm okay with. Well, I guess so. Yeah, because most of what we're going to be doing today is explaining things. And who doesn't love a good time lapse? Who doesn't love a good time lapse? In fact, while I'm drawing this jacket on this girl right here, uh, this was actually drawn, uh, one of my buddies invited me to go to the mall uh, this one weekend, and they like to draw people basically in the food court. And they're always like looking for really ugly people, right? Because they're like, ugly people are really easy to draw because you can just like 
mess around with their faces, like and just completely distort it, and it still, you know, looks ugly. So it's really easy. <laughs> so like, no, I like I like personally, I like looking for you know the hot chicks. I like to draw the hot chicks because I'm a firm believer that you know I like to try to stay away from like a syndrome that artists have. It's called like the Barbie head syndrome. Or basically all their faces and all their heads look the same like the artist has the go-to pretty face that they'll always draw and I like to look for variety in faces I love to look at people and say oh man what makes this person like absolutely beautiful and different and unique from everybody else so uh, that's something that I personally like to study so anyway uh, we went to the mall going back to that story and there was this really cool jacket that this girl was wearing and so I actually sketched it I'll show you guys the actual sketch that I did I sketched it in my sketchbook right here. You can see. Oh, oh crap. Don't look at that other thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't look at this. Just look at this. <laughs> that is a surprise for later. But yeah, um, basically I have to hold it at an angle because the exposure is all weird on this camera. But uh, I drew that girl with that jacket on. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's sweet. So we just went ahead and transferred that right over here. Okay, so the first thing that I want you guys to understand is uh, let's go back right to before I dropped in the colors. Because again, like I said, I draw everything. See how I'm working with this layer above the background? Then what I do is I start dropping the colors behind the lines, much like an animation cell. That's basically the way I like to describe it. It's, it's the animation cell technique. Technique. And I like to start dark. I like to start dark. We're painting dark skin, but I like to make it super, super dark. And then we're going to go ahead and paint on the whites. I start with flat colors, make a couple different, you know, masks and uh, layers there, and I'll, I will dissect those so you can see exactly what I was doing with those. And then I begin sort of shading the face. And you might be asking me, well, Keenan, how do you know to paint that light right there, and that light right there in the eye pocket, and on the cheek, and all that stuff? This uh, I actually went into last week when I talked about painting the planes of the face learning how to draw light onto the face to show the shifts in planes, right? So go and check out last week's tutorial if you want a little bit more help on that. But I'm just going to assume you know all that. We're going to jump right into what we're doing here. So, um, yeah, now I'm just painting on the highlights and just trying to get an overall feel of how I'm going to tone this skin. And I'm absolutely loving this. Like, I really... And like as I was painting it, I was like, this is so fun. One of the things that I liked most about it was um, just having like this deep kind of like dark reddish brown skin and then having like this blue black hair like, it made it look so awesome. I really like that. And I love how the scalp like shows through like with the cornrows or the braids or whatever you got going on there. When you do that with your hair, your scalp actually shows quite a bit between the, the rows of hair there. So, there. I think we're closing in on where we are currently. Yes. All righty, people. So let's go ahead and jump into our... Let's jump into our lovely lady here. And let's begin dissecting some of the things that I want to talk about today. Okay. So uh, the first thing that I'll talk about is... Let's talk about the general construction in the beginning. Let's talk about the general construction in the beginning. Okay. So... When you're constructing the face, the face, uh, one thing that I found really helps to make your characters look, I don't know, ethnic or whatever term you want to call it, is um, two things that I really like to do is I like to take the muzzle, right? I said the muzzle, which is this area right here beneath the nose, and you can actually feel how the, your lips and the area that I call the muzzle actually protrudes from your face. Well, on... Um, on this character, right? On I, I call her Sonya, Sanja, Sun, Sunha, Sanja. I don't know. Whatever. Her name is Sonya. On Sonya's face here, her muzzle is protruding a little bit more, and I think that helps to add a little bit more of her ethnicity into her. Um, if that made any sense. But <laughs> anyway, what I'm focusing on here is uh, this area right here. This muzzle. I'm protruding that out, so I almost make the lips stick out a little bit further from the face than you normally would. And I like to make, you know, have nice full lips, all that good stuff. And then also another thing that I really like to make sure that I'm doing is the bridge of the nose. The bridge of the nose, as you flatten it and sort of widen it, 
this also helps to make her look freaking awesome and look like a sister. All right, so keep those two things in mind. Uh, as far as the eyes and the eyebrows, I mean, I was kind of just messing around with things. I was like, oh, hey, let's give her like these high eyebrows, like really striking features. I, I think that that really kind of helps with making this character look awesome. Kind of defined uh, cheekbones, uh, jawline, cheekbone right there. Um, those are all things that I'm thinking about. And I was just looking at, you know, various Google images and just trying to figure out what type of face I was going for. But uh, that's just the basics of the construction that I went through while putting this thing together. And again, I like to make sure, you know, the forehead is not too small and not like too big. And then that scalp is showing through. All right, then. So um, after we have laid in our face and we have line art that we're liking and a construction of the face that we're liking, now what I did was I went into the skin, okay? And let me show you guys exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so right over here, you got your layer one. Uh, that's my line layer. Then basically, if I wanted to start this over again, I would just make a new layer right behind it. Let's say we want to make her blue. Why not? And then I see, look, I just drop the color right behind the lines. And what's really cool about this, what I personally like about this, is that because I added in just a little bit of the values in the lines, when I drop just a flat color behind it, it immediately starts to add some shape to the face, and then I can build off of that. As opposed to not, if it was just lines, and then I drop behind it, then I would have to go in there and try to like figure things out, you know? It's kind of like that thing where artists work in black and white, and then they add color to it. We're kind of using that to my advantage. I used to hate that technique. I used to, I used to be like, artists that work in black and white and then add color, they, they have no skill. They, they can mix colors if their lives depended on it. But now I've realized that I was dumb, and uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't matter about that. It's like, whatever works is whatever works. All that matters is the result. So I did the same thing with the jacket and the hair. And again, here, let me show you exactly what it looks like. These are the colors with the lines removed. Interesting, no? Interesting. You can see I put a little bit of value and stuff in there, a little bit of darks, a little bit of those things. Just kind of messing around with that. But see how I actually dropped blue into the hair. And what that does is because I painted the hair black uh, with the lines, the blue kind of shines through and gives it like this kind of bluish shimmer uh, against the light. And it looks really freaking awesome. Okay. So next what I want to do, let me pull up my notes once again. Uh, we talked about the muzzle coming out, bridge width. You want to make sure you're getting a nice uh, lengthy bridge or wide bridge. Always looks nice. You don't always have to do it, but I personally think that, that looks really nice. Um, let's talk about the actual blending of the skin. Let's talk about how you add lights and what you want to be thinking about. And you can see right in my notes here, I've talked about dark reds to desaturated light. Okay, And this is something that I've gone into many, many times. Every single skin tutorial that I've done, I've covered this. But once again, let's go ahead and jump into that. Let's talk about that. What does that mean, dark reds to desaturated light? Well, what I mean is, is when I'm painting like a lighter tone of skin, I've always talked to you guys about, let's, like, I'll do a little uh, example over here, right? Let's, let's do like a peach skin a lighter tone. So what I've always talked about in terms of skin and blending, the way that skin behaves with light is that as you go into shadow, basically it, it almost works like a diagonal. What you want to avoid is being like, oh hey, it's peach skin, so the shadow would be right there. You know, it's just like go straight down. No, 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 it doesn't do that. It goes diagonally, so it goes down and to the right, aka saturation. And you can add a little bit of red in there too, you know, stuff like that. You know, so it does that to a point. This is how skin works. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, again, we're going to continue with that thing. We're going to continue with that uh, progression, right? So if we're going to make it lighter, we're not going to go straight up. We're going to go up into the left, which is going to lighten and desaturate. And it's going to hue shift, which is this right here, this little bar, and hue shift up towards yellow. So you're going to get something like this. And I was asking myself, oh no, well that, that works really well with you know lighter tones, but 
how does it work when you have you know a character with very dark skin? And what actually happens is something that's very very awesome. And basically, the way that I like to think about it is you're starting with a dark red. Okay, so I started with this color right here. Okay, so comparing these two colors, they're actually very similar, right? This is probably more like a tan skin, not exactly like a white pale albino skin. But anyway, this is usually like the, the range that I like to work with. But with dark skin, you're going to start to, uh, you're going to start falling into what I call, you're almost going into like more, you're going to introduce more blues into it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know exactly what I was trying to say, but I guess that sums it up. So you can see how you're still in like the reds and the oranges. With dark skin, you're going to go even more towards like the blues, almost like a purple, right? And then you can get stuff like this, okay? So this looks really nice. And then you blend it towards the red, okay? But then something very interesting happens once the light starts to interact with it. And that is that it starts to desaturate, but it desaturates almost at a heightened pace, right? So instead of, normally I always talk about when you have two colors like this, right, right next to each other, what you want to do is you want to blend it. You want to blend it with a saturated color between it, sort of like this. Sort of like doing this. Normally I would tell you guys to do something like this. However, I've found that it actually looks better if you omit this a little bit. You can still have a tiny bit of this, especially like in the cheeks. There might be a little bit of that blending going on. But with dark colored skin, there because what this is is it's subsurface scattering. And there's less subsurface scattering on dark tones of skin. So if you sort of omit that just a little bit more and you go from saturated to desaturated, like look at this. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going from this right here. Now watch how it's going to go up and to the right very quickly as we go up this way. Okay? So we're up and to the right here. And then we go up to the right more. And then we're way the heck up here. So we went like that to that. So it's almost like heightening and exaggerating the from saturated darks to desaturated light and uh, I found that that works really well for me you guys try it out for yourself see what you like see what you like and um, yeah yeah okay so hopefully that helps you out with uh, in terms of coming up with lights and blending for your skin tones think of yeah just like dark reds or dark browns going to desaturated light um, next, I want to talk to you guys about the braid technique, something that I really love. I love this technique. And it's super easy, really effective, and it allows you to get a really cool uh, look. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So the way that I do this, right, the way that I do this is I actually just create a shape like this, right? Let's create a couple shapes, okay? So there's our hair, right? And then what you want to do with braids is you want to think about Basically, I think about it doing this. It's like if you draw a bunch of lines going this way, and then you draw a bunch of lines going this way, see how they almost like fit into each other? They interlock. So it's basically this. That pattern right there is what makes the braid. Okay? But what you want to do with this when you're drawing a, drawing a braid like this is I almost think of it as erasing. So you draw the shape that you want in, and then you erase out the shape like this and then you drop that in and boom you got yourself some braids baby Woo! super easy super easy peasy and then you can go back in and kind of like you know make it a little bit more uh, highlighty I don't know whatever you want to do but that's basically all I was doing here you can see I was just drawing those in and then erasing out those braids same thing in here now let's take away all those colors and you can see that uh, yeah, take a look. See, that's literally all I did. I just drew in those shapes, and then I did that little repeating pattern, a little this thing. It's all I do to make my braids. Super easy, super effective, and that makes us happy. And then, again, I drop the blue behind it. Just take this color. It's actually a very desaturated blue. We can make it like a dark blue, something kind of like that. And then when you drop that behind the hair, it looks really cool. And then you can add in a highlight 
just like this. Just grab yourself a lighter blue like that, and just draw a little highlight going right through it. Aha! And there's the start of your braids. That gives you a good starting point. Okay, so with all that out of the way, uh, we've been going for about 20 minutes. So I think it's about time for some Question Catapult! All right, ladies and gentlemen, please cast your questions over the castle walls. And I will pick out my favorite ones and answer them, specifically regarding painting people of color, sisters, Sonya, dark skin tones, whatever you want to call it. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and do a little bit of overpainting, because that is the final thing that I like to do uh, as I paint things. So I do the animation cell, right? I lay the colors in front, or the lines in front, color behind, get a good look as we have right here. Then I go above the lines, in front, and then I do overpainting, aka OP layer. OP layer. Which is very OP. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. And Oh, wait. But before we get into that, I actually do want to color the lines. This is another reason why I like doing this. And once again, I'm going to show you guys because it's freaking awesome. And I think if everybody tries this out and they like it, I think it will make their art just that much better. Normally, I don't claim to be the end all with everything, but this works. Okay? So the reason why I like making my lines on one layer and then like uh, like drawing and erasing just to make my lines and then dropping the color behind it is because of this right here. You have your lines and you hit this little button which locks all the transparent pixels. And then what you're able to do is you're able to select a color such as this one right here, this dark red, and then you can go back in here and actually paint color back into your lines, back onto your lines and just your lines. And for that reason, I highly suggest you guys try this out. Give it a shot. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. But what if it does? You know, just give it a shot. It might work as good for you as it does for me. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm going back in and I'm painting these uh, lines out of the picture, or just making them more subtle. When you paint them, notice how it now allows the face to kind of more uh, like blend in a little bit more. It blends in the lines with the face. I think that, that's what I was trying to say. That's what I was trying to say. I found the words. Okay. And this sets you up really well for your overpainting. Because then you don't have to like blend black and, and into dark, like dark reds into black. You know, it's like now you have like really warm colors, really warm lines to go with your dark skin. And I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Makes everything so much easier. And it makes your nose itch. So watch out for that. Um, Alright. Go ahead and lighten these lines up a little bit. Um, these need to be a little bit more like this. Okay. What are you guys saying over here? What are you guys saying? Okay. Um... Aliano's saying, I'm trying to find a desktop screen capture recorder. I'm wondering what you use for that, a paid or free one. I use a program called Cam Studio. For my for my my time lapses, I use Cam Studio. It has a little thing where it auto you can auto set up, you know, how the time lapse works and all that good stuff. As far as the show goes, I use a program called XSplit. And I should probably put that in the frequently asked questions. But let's see if I get around to that. Anyway, next question. Oh my gosh. Stream died? <laughs> I just got a bunch of things saying the stream is down in the in the chat. <laughs> I do apologize. Are you guys are messing with me? Okay, either you guys are messing with me saying the stream is down or something. I don't know. <laughs> if the stream is not working, just try have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? Try that. Should work well for you. 
Um, but in the meantime, I do have to answer a couple more questions, and then we're going to end episode 157? 57, I think, Ron? In the meantime, let's finish up with Sonja. Sonja. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, you guys are over here saying April Fools, April Fools. Yeah, okay. Very funny. Very funny. Freak me out. Freaking me out, man. I actually kind of liked that. That reddish shadow. It looked really nice. Lovely. Okay, and I do want to do a little bit of overpainting, so let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of that before we end. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here, and what I really like about overpainting is now whatever you say goes. Whatever you say goes. So basically, if you want this eyebrow to be like that color, what you say goes. Right? If you want them to be red, again, what you say goes. That's why I like it. The power is in your hands once you step into the world of the OP. So you must make sure to exercise responsibility with that power. Otherwise, you may die. Get a little bit of this blue. I love the blue. The blue looks so awesome on the, the dark hair. I really like it. I really like it a lot. Okay. Looks good. I'm going to take one more question. There we go. I'll call it good. Um, oh, great question, Eleron. Asking, Elrond's asking, how do you make a face more masculine or feminine? That is something that I probably can't sum up in a short, in a short answer. And I probably couldn't even sum it up in a freaking book if I wanted to, because quite frankly, I don't even know. Like, other than the fact of, you know, just make him hairy and make the man super, you know, square jawed and giant forehead and big nose and you know, like all that stuff. But there's there's so many subtleties. It's, it's actually the the line between masculine and feminine is very, very subtle. And that's something that I'm constantly interested in studying myself. And so my answer would be to you to just you gotta figure it out. Because everybody draws uh, males and females, you know, in their own style. You know, like this is I consider this a style of my own. And like I said, I like to, I personally like to figure out what makes a person look uniquely beautiful. And that's something that I would challenge you to do as well. Because really, beauty abounds. Beauty abounds in the human race. And I'm interested to know what creates it. I love it. Love it. Her eyes are looking a little scary now that I lightened them. I like these eyes more. Eyes, oh, okay, here's one thing. Eyes are a huge thing. Eyes can either make or break your drawing, in my humble opinion. If you do them wrong or you just mess them up, if you lose the original soul that was in your character, it literally, it will change your, your picture. It will change the character, it will change everything. So be careful with that. Yeah, I was looking at the eyes. I'm like, I don't like those eyes. They don't look as nice as the ones that I had before. That's a little bit better. It's more like it. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end today's show. We're going to end today's show. Thank you once again for joining me live on Twitch. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I hope you got some good value out of this and learned some things. Anything you learn, please post it on Facebook. Remember, I'm drawing your characters tomorrow, whatever Wednesday. And don't forget, you can get your cool prints by clicking on this little link. Go to Patreon, check that out, support the comic, and I'll send awesome stuff to your doorstep. Till next time, you guys take care.